Okay, welcome everybody. Kathy, you want to take it away? Yeah, welcome everyone. We're excited to have you. And um, this is our talent management system. So this webinar is more or less one of the um, programs that we offer, um, breaking it down into other sections as well. So we are excited to have you here today. And please, any questions or anything, Michelle, in just a couple slides here, will tell you exactly how um, this will go. Because we really want this to be um, conversational and exactly. que ask questions and for you all to really learn and understand what this is. So I'm ready for the next slide, All Michelle. right, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so um, what we're going to be talking about today is our, our actual talent management system, as I said, and it's all about the profit and payback of your top talent. Because the truth is, it's the people that we work with, that's where we gain our successes. So when we invest in them, we build them out, the top talent shines through and they're aligned with our strategy and they're aligned with our client customer experiences. So Michelle. Thank you, Kathy. And so Kathy did mention just some housekeeping items. This is being recorded. So we will send this out via email the replay. So you can watch it later if you want to. Kathy and I will be moderating throughout. We would love to have you participate in the conversation. That means if you feel more comfortable in the chat, you can certainly use that. You can use the, the uh, Q&A. You can unmute yourself and show your face if you like, if you're feeling um, amiable to that. So please participate in the conversation. All right, so as far as what we're gonna cover today, we wanna talk about really three things, people, profit, and payback. So the people is making sure that we have the right people in the right seats based on the values, our organizational values, our team values, our individual debt values. Kathy and I are so passionate about that particular part. And then once we've done a good job laying the foundation for that and the framework for that, we can then start talking about the profit of our business. What does the scoring model look like to make sure that we're working on or focused on the right work as well as obtaining the right people for those spots and making sure that the results are what we want them to be. And we're, we're really looking at those profitable initiatives or the things that make us money, assuming we're for profit, assuming we're a business for profit. And then the recipe for uh, success is the payback. You know, looking at those tools and metrics, checkpoints to make sure we're measuring success along the way. So one of the things that Michelle and I have designed is actually an assessment. And a lot of what we're going to be talking about here in the next 55 minutes of this webinar is dealing with that assessment. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to take about four minutes right now and ask you to, whether you'd like to do it on your computer, if you'd like to use, use your phone, we'd like to ask you to go to profitandpayback.com. So that's www.profit, P-R-O-F-I-T, and A-N-D spelled out, payback, P-A-Y-B-A-C-K, dot com to complete the assessment and like i said this should only take about three or four minutes so we'll be sort of quiet while you do that so for those of you just joining i think tracy you just joined us and Sharon, um, I, you just joined us. If you didn't hear Kathy's instructions, you can either use your phone or your, your PC to go to profitandpayback.com to go ahead and take that assessment. Whichever is easier, your, it, it'll work on the phone or the PC, whichever one you prefer. 
And that'll take about three to four minutes. Awesome. Sharon has it. What was the weather dress profit and? Yep. Oh, let me put it in the chat. That's uh, probably a good thing to do. Trying to make sure I spell it right. That would be important, <laughs> right? There it is, Tracy. There we go. You all didn't know you were signing up for a test today. <laughs> At least it's an easy one. I think so. <laughs> Self-assessment, right? That's Business right. Assessment. <laughs> Self-assessments usually aren't the easy ones. Oh, that's actually a good point. That's a that's really actually... good point, Charles. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Holly. <laughs> uh, you can, we're, we're, everybody's taking the uh, assessment right now. It's, uh, if you go either on your phone or on your PC, it's okay. profitandpayback.com and it's in the chat window as well. Okay. Michelle, what was it again? <laughs> oh, that's no worries. It's www.profit, P R O F I T A N D, payback, P A Y B A C K dot com. Okay, thanks. Of course. And I know Holly's still working on hers. How is everybody else doing with theirs? Just submitted. Excellent. Thank you, I'm Charles. I'm getting ready. All right. That's Hello. good. Perfect. I'm on step six. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy.
Sharon, how are you doing? I'm on five. I'm close. Oh, all right. Close. No worries. Just checking in. I don't want to rush anybody. I just want to, I don't want you to all be bored either. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Heather, how about you? Oh, yeah. I'm doing good. Excellent. Okay. I'm getting Perfect. to the end here. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. Yep. Thank you. Am I going to rush anybody if I say we have one more minute? So it's Sharon. Uh, I'm okay. I should be good. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I think Holly's probably wrapping up. We're in the process. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move us along. Thank you for sending that. We wanted to give you some dialogue on the, the breadth of what we're talking about. And that helps you really understand where we're coming from. Mm. So Kathy, you wanna start us off with, with what that assessment means? Yeah, I sure will. So the different categories of the profit and payback assessment are laid out um, according to number one, first addressing your people, your top talent. And what that really looks at, what the, the top performers really look at is, um, are they living your values? Do you know and understand what the overall values are? Are they engaged in a way where they will continue to develop and grow and request the tools they need and really come out at the end where they're the ones that are saying, hey, what's next? Where's the strategy? They then start to ask the questions. So that's why section one actually looks the way it does. Section two that you completed is really more about the work. Because I think what happens so many times in businesses is we get so involved in the day-to-day -day or putting out fires or whatever we wanna say you know, staying inside our box, not doing it any differently, that we forget to ask some real powerful questions like what's making us money and what's not making us money, right? What do we need to really get rid of and stop doing because it's part of an old model or an old paradigm that we no longer need? Is this work aligned with our values? We know our team is now aligned with our values, but is the work we're doing aligned with our values? Because until you can put those two things together, the clients that are coming to you may or not, may not be aligned. And that's what you want. And is the time and effort that you're putting into certain or specific projects really worth the money? Is it money making? Michelle, do you want to talk a little bit about the next one? Yeah, sure. I think so. Then once we've done that and we've we've looked at the the people in our organization, we've we've assessed you know what our vision, our values are. We've started looking at the work that we're doing. Now it's to, time to define what's above the line and what's below the line. Are we and are we allowing our people to grow with those profit channels so that we can have a business? that is sustainable long-term. That gets into item number three, as far as the selection. You know, we can't, we cannot do it all. We need to prioritize the work that we're doing and then our people with the work. Then we move into accountability. So, you know, hopefully we've, we've made some decisions on what work we wanna do, uh, what work we should be doing, what work we shouldn't be doing. Are we, 
creating a mechanism for our people to grow so that they can succeed? Are we delegating to them so that we have a, we have a team that can potentially take work off our plates? Maybe, maybe we, we're in a position now where we can actually take a vacation and walk away from our business. How awesome would that, would, that would be? <laughs> so, you know, that's really where we get to the selection and the accountability. And then, you know, the consistency is fixing things as we find them. So making, making awareness of maybe something, a piece of work sneaks in that we, we shouldn't be, we really, sh it's not part of our, our, our mission, our vision, or we, you know, we have some issues with our, our team members uh, and we need to make corrections with those throughout. Um, you know, are we, are we letting go people that, you know, if we tried to fix those issues with our in, the individual performers and that's not working, are we letting those people go? You know, because that then drags the whole team down and potentially can create a mechanism where you have your top performers working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, extra time to pick up for those that aren't doing a good job. Anything else to add there, Kathy? No, I think that's great, Michelle. Yeah. So what the section we're moving into now in this webinar is really looking at your people as your top talent. What does that actually mean? And how do you start to create that? So on the next slide, we're talking about why values matter. You hear us talk over and over again about values. Well, I love Simon Sinek. How many of you know Simon Sinek? <laughs> he is amazing, right? And what he says is it just makes, it's just common sense that when you know what your values are, and that's company-wide values, each department has their own values. So, you know, there's different umbrellas of this, but when you know what your values are, now you start building your team according to the behaviors they have for those values. So it comes down to soft skills. You know, over the course of my many years in, in human resources, corporate HR. Many years, I, Kathy. Many years. <laughs> Um, over the course of my time there, I found that truly 90% of the people I terminated, I've, I've hired over a thousand people. I've terminated a couple hundred, right? Mm -hmm. So over the course of the terminations of those people, 90% of the time was because of their behaviors, their soft skills, mm -hmm. not the fact that they couldn't do the job. So values plus behavior equals culture. And it truly is one of the most important things that you can do to start to align your business. Why does it matter? It matters because of employee engagement, employee accountability. It matters because they will take more risks when they understand and have a decision-making process to use with their values. It decreases your cost per hire because now you're creating more of a system more of a ritual, right, that you do constantly. This is just the way we do things around here. Recognition and reputation. The awesome thing about this is so often businesses want to, their brand is here, their marketing is here, their hiring is here. And the reality of it is it's all fits together. It's all part of the puzzle that makes this organization who they are. It's a reason why people say, ah, I want to work there. Do you have any openings? Is it possible for me to work there? That's why. I mentioned decision-making early on. When you know your values and when you say this is value number one, value number three, number two, number three, number four, number five, someone, employees, team members can make a decision based on your highest values. And then again, going back to branding, social media and raving fans. So yeah. Anything, Michelle? No, I just want, I want to move into what that winning formula looks like. So we've, you know, in order to get to a place where you have long-term success, the winning team is creating this particular formula. So you've got the, the values component, which you covered, obviously the people, if, if you're a for-profit business that comes in and then that equals payback long-term and it has these components and, and we need to pay attention to all of these components. 
you mentioned Simon Sinek. I think one of the books that I love is Leaders Eat Last. And, it, and he, he does a wonderful job, if you haven't read that, that he does a really an amazing job of setting up how leaders position their teams for success. And it is essentially what we're trying to communicate here. So what I want to move into now is do, do all of you have examples of you and your people limit living your values? And I'm known to pick on folks, so I, I will do that. <laughs> Who would like to share some of your, some examples that you have of you and your people living your values today? Well, I'll share. Excellent, um, go ahead, Carl. I have a staff of uh, five, uh, two instructors, two instructional assistants, and an office manager and myself. Um, and, you know, we, I'm, I, I, I believe that, you know, taking care of yourself and taking care of your family first are very important uh, components of life uh, in the business world. Now, we're, we're, we're a government contractor and also aligned with a nonprofit, so we're not a profit-making organization, but I would, mm -hmm. I've been in profit-making organizations before and would, you know, feel the same way. Um, and so, um, you know, I think when you, when you make sure your employees know that you care about them as people, especially in a small organization like we are, um, that goes a long way to, to help. And for instance, today we had one of my teachers, we don't have students yet, so it makes it easier. Um, mm -hmm. But one of my teachers this morning texted me about seven o'clock this morning and she'd been up all night with uh, migraines and wasn't feeling well, was going to come in a little late. I said, you know, uh, absolutely. Well, then she called in a little later about eight o'clock and said went out to her car and her husband's car had been stolen and her car had been broken oh, into no. you know, oh, like, no. oh my gosh so you know i just told her to stay home because i knew she's got two little children and you know i i can imagine the trauma that they're going through just knowing that daddy's car was taken and and just the whole deal so you know i it, being here wasn't important for her today and being home with her family and, and taking care of those things and her health is more important because we're having students come in next week and I need her healthy right. and focused and everything. So it's worth the day and I'm not charging her a day off, you know, on her yeah. time card or whatever, just stay home and take care of yourself. So um, I think, you know, those kind of things I think are important to let that's your, let your folks know that, that you care about them personally. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that Charles. Yeah. Thank you. But anybody else like to share? This question. All right, I'll keep going. Kathy, what are your thoughts on this quote? Oh, I love this quote because it's so true, right? Um, people do leave people and we've seen it happen over and over again. Um, someone is hired into a leadership position or um, possibly the wrong person was promoted into a leadership position and the team is really having challenges rallying around them whatever that may be and it's really important that we are mindful as leaders of having empathy of being able to hold the space of really listening to what it is that people physically need. You know, Charles, just like your example, that that is where we are at in this world. And it is something that's so needed because people leave people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else, Michelle? No, I think, um, you know, I, I, there's, there's data out there that supports uh, people leave managers mostly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is disturbing. So I think as, as it's our responsibility to make sure that we support our managers, support our leaders, and elevate that level of leadership to a place where we, we understand what's taking place and then we fix those issues. Yep. Yeah, so going from that space, we're moving into really talking about how to align your top talent with the right work. Because when those, those two things happen, that's when you start to see the profit. Exactly. 
So another question for all of you, how is your top talent or your people aligned to the work that makes you money today? Are you wanting someone to answer that? Yes, I would love. I, I'm good at the pregnant pauses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by, if, you, if you would like to share, Tracy, I would love to hear your thoughts. Well, I feel like in my business, I have um, aligned my team. Um, I've, I've empowered them to make decisions. Um, so that everything doesn't necessarily have to go through me mm, nice. and um, that they're all working efficiently. I mean, there's obviously room for improvement or I wouldn't be on this call. And I recognize that. Um, but I, I think everybody has buy-in and, knows the vision, the mission, and the values of everything Brevard.com and what it is that we're trying to do. It's streamlining processes and systems because we do all work remotely. Um, but I think, you know, you have to empower people to make the decisions and give them some boundaries that they can work within. And then if they have a question, they can reach out to you. But um, that's what I've tried to do. And Tracy, how long have you, I mean, you have had folks with you for quite some time, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, my team is all remote. They all started here in Brevard County. Um, and then team members moved, mm. including um, contributing writers. I have a writer in Colorado who still makes phone calls and interviews local businesses and writes stories for me here in Brevard. Um, my website editor, I met her at a Career Source Brevard event where I was speaking. She's been with me seven years now and somehow no matter what her family life is like or her job situation, she has always made everything Brevard a top priority in her world, even though it's not her primary income. It's her mm -hmm. happy space. And, and what do you attribute that to? Why do, you, why do you believe that that's the case, that she, she makes that a priority? I think because the work that we do inspires and educates and motivates people to a better life, a better opportunity, growth, personal growth and development. I mean, everything that we do in our storytelling, in the magazine, on our website, she just has buy-in to a better quality of life, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. You know, what's, what's interesting about what you just said is that, so you, you mentioned delegating, empowering folks, and uh, Stephanie has been reaching out to me and your team to, to get the, the page up. Uh, she, she added a tab and she goes, I, I, Tracy, I think Tracy will be fine with this. So I'm going to go ahead and make that decision. So that is what you just described in action. An excellent example of that in action. And she also, in, she didn't ask me about that, but she's very correct. But she did say that she had to come back to you because our system um, our, our web team had changed the design specifications mm -hmm. and so she had to come back to you and she said, hopefully it's not going to be a problem. I think everything is okay. I just want to give you a heads up. So very good at communicating, nice. and, you know, making those kind of decisions. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Would anybody else like to share? I was just going to say, um, um, the way our structure is, I, uh, we, we have to answer, we have a bunch of stakeholders we answer to. We have uh, uh, an office of the Pentagon that appropriates the money and a nonprofit up in Alexandria, Virginia that manages the program. And then Patrick, we, and then the Brevard School System. And then we have a nonprofit and then our management company that, that runs us. 
So we got all these different people who are always kind of tugging and have, they, they of course all have different, uh, different stakes. And, and so, and our main mission is to teach these kids. Uh, so my assistant, uh, who's the one who happened to be sick today, um, she and I met when we first, we just started this in February. So um, we sat down before we, before we really got started and I said, look, you're going to take care of the curriculum in the classroom stuff. And I'm going to take care of all of that noise outside the building. Nice. And I just want you and your team to teach these kids and to love on these kids and to ignite hope in these kids. Cause we, we really focus on title one schools, uh, you know, underperforming and, and underserved students. And I said, I'll take care of the reports and the, blah 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 and all that stuff so the admin stuff that junk <laughs> exactly and you go and run that side of the house and she she got this huge smile on her face because she didn't know what the structure of this thing was going to be and soon she, she and and the, the interesting thing is uh, i'm a former high school teacher in Merritt island and she was a former middle school teacher we've got this song and dance with the school system because uh, we now have three of us have left the school system to do this, but we have to partner with the school system. And so they're, they're kind of mad at us a little bit on top of it because we've, you know, we've, uh, we got some good talent here from the school system. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, but we're excited about the way the structure we've, we've got going and, and uh, we only had students for a few days, but in the fall we, we've hoped to hit the ground running and I really think the uh, it's all it's working out really well. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that, Charles. I, you know, I want to use a, a client example. So we're working with a, an organization right now that, you know, hadn't, didn't have their, their values and, and they were not, well, they knew them, but they didn't have them articulated or documented. Um, they were working on their, their profit, profitability. They are a for-profit organization. And what they found was that they were, they were picking the wrong clients so they were working with the wrong clients based on their number one value being quality. Uh, so, and, and these particular clients were more cost conscious. Uh, and so there was a, a clash in that they wanted to do a quality job and then they were giving a work away for free because of that. Plus, plus they were hiring team members that weren't necessarily aligned with that, that number one value. So, you know, when they had to work, stay late or, or do a little bit extra, that there was a misalignment. So they're, they're in the process of changing that so that they've, they've identified those values. They know that that's the number one priority. They have, the, I can't remember the two, three, four, and five, uh, but the, the, now, they're, now they're working on creating the, a team that is quality focused they are saying no to, to working with clients that don't align with that so that they can continue to increase their profitability over time. And do you have anything that you want to add to that, Kathy? I just love, between the last slide and this slide, what I've been hearing, right? Because with Tracy, you can tell one of her highest values is clients, the community. Mm -hmm. With Charles, it's the students. Right. And because they're so clear on those things, like they know it in their heart, they're coming from a place of service, right? Which ignites, it ignites the people you work with, it ignites your customers or clients or your students, it ignites everything. So Michelle, your example, on top of it, it was, it's beautiful because it that's exactly what this whole thing is about. It it's is. about being in alignment. Well, and pulling all those pieces together, right? Yeah. Okay. And pulling all of those pieces together. So let's go ahead and move on to the scoring model. What is, this is, this is oversimplified, but you know, it's in the interest of, of keeping it simple so that we can communicate it. Um, Kathy, you want to get us started on this? Sure, sure. So when, when you look at what you're doing right, or maybe what you're not doing right, it's really important to, number one, keep it as simple as possible. And these would be questions that you would ask yourself for results, but you would also ask your team. 
I don't know if it would be everyone on your team or your key players, your top talent, whatever that is, but this is open for communication. So the first mm -hmm. question you would ask is, is our portfolio of work aligned with our values? Are we drawing in the right people? So Michelle and I, our number one value is always putting people first. Mm -hmm. And if a client comes to us and they don't care, they don't really care about their customers, they don't really care about their people, they are a, maybe a more lower cost driven or more a convenience kind of thing, well, they're We're gonna tap them on the head and send them on their way. Yeah. <laughs> they're not our client, they're not our client. And it's okay, that's the way the world is, right? Yeah. So, you know, really looking at this question and getting to the bottom of it is important. Easy, is it a yes or no? Mm -hmm. um, do you and your people know what's making you money? And do you know what's not making your, your money, that what's not making you money so that you can eliminate it or start to phase it out or get really real? Um, I was talking to a prospect from uh, Michelle and I yesterday and it was really interesting because she had just left a, a financial meeting and she said, one of the things that's made the, one of the biggest impacts on my whole organization is to deeply, deeply know my numbers. And the minute mm -hmm. I start to walk away from knowing my numbers, it gets a little shaky and I have to pull myself back in. And these two things are all about, you know, do you and your people know what's making your money, making you money and what's not making you money? Or, or, or if you don't want to use the word money, Use the word results. Yeah, exactly. It's all the same. Yeah. Exactly. Michelle? Yeah, and I think just to, to add to that, as far as, you know, it, once you've done that, in, in the example that I just provided, you're, there's, there's, it's crystal clear on what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. And then you, you know what clients to work with and what clients not to work with. You also know what work you want to do and what work you don't want to do. And, and that's, you know, again, a yes or no. Is your company working on the right work? Have you, have you selected properly? Uh, then finally is, are you assessing that? Do you, do you have a 90 day snapshot of what that looks like? Are you progressing forward based on that 90 day snapshot to tie all those pieces together? to make sure that everything is as it should be. And, and if not, are you fixing it? Course correcting it, making changes. Uh, and it, 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 this is again, simple, yes or no. You should be able to have the clarity of a yes or no. And if you don't, then that means you need more data or you need to, to um, dive deeper into a specific area. And that, the reason we did that assessment with you earlier is so that you can figure out if there are particular areas that match up with this scoring model in order to make some changes for the better. And you'll, you'll know kind of, it's really, you, you are, it's the, you are here mall map is what I would like to say. So this, we have, we have, we love this book, both Kathy and I use it. It's um, the, the quote is profit is not an event. Profit is a habit. And this is the book is called Profit First. If you haven't read it, I would encourage you to read it. Uh, any, do you, any of you have some thoughts on how profit is a habit? I would say that um, when you're dialed into all of these things that you're talking about, it dictates to your actions and the daily things that you do versus getting caught up in the, I don't know what. Minutia. Yeah. yeah. All, Minutia. The, all the little pieces. All the, stuff all the little pieces. Right? Yeah, no, that's good. That, thank you, Tracy. And I think it's, it's, it, to, I think uh, Kathy did a good job of explaining earlier. If we need to be focusing on our numbers, we need to look at that. And look at looking, we need to look at the numbers, we need to look at the people, we need to look at all these po components, the measurements, in order to determine where are we at, regardless of whether this is a, a, a profitable business or a nonprofit. 
this is interesting. So actually one of my partners and I just had a conversation about the, the strategy. He said, how do I make time for strategy? I'm, I'm struggling with all of the tactical things. And I think Tracy, you just mentioned that, you know, the minutia. And so there are ways to, to, uh, to organize our work so that we, that does bubble up to the top. I personally use time boxing. So I'm, I have, and then accountability, I have, usually have an accountability buddy. <laughs> so that if, if I have to do some strategic work, for example, I have some, I had, I have a meeting set, set for Friday afternoon that is tied to the strategy of, of the, the work that, that we're doing. And in order to be prepared for that, I had to time box in my calendar so that Anne can hold me accountable on Friday. Uh, but this is, this, according to the predictive index, what most CEOs want are you know, from consultants and from folks that, that um, clients that we work with is strategy development, talent, uh, talent strategy, operational execution. You know, you can see those two, the strategy development and talent strategy are, are pretty heavy. So that, that, honestly, this is why Kathy and I brought, came together to bring this to the table so that we can help organizations combine those. Do you have anything else you want to say on that, Kathy? Yeah, I, I, what I find so interesting in working with clients, right, is as you delve into the, into the questions, um, I start to realize how much leaders possibly um, whether that be C-level leaders um, or even many times midline managers don't discuss with the team a vision. Where do we want to be in a year? How you with your talent being top talent, right? Having the, the behaviors of what it is that we're looking for, how you are going to be part of that growth. And I think so often that's where businesses fall because once people on your team have a vision and an understanding of where the organization is going, they want to grow. They want to develop. They want to be part of it. Even if they don't want to grow and develop, even if they want to stay exactly where they are, they still want to be a part of all the excitement that's going on around them. So this is where a lot of communication really comes in and a lot of planning for that communication. So it's just an issue that people want to know what's happening and how to move forward. I focus a lot on strategy with my team, especially when it comes to selling and generating revenue. Nice, Tracy. And, nice. And matching people. I've started this year um, spending considerable amount of time educating my community partners on what a good client is. And that paid great dividends yesterday that came from a referral. Um, from one of my community partners. And it happened to be an account that both myself and Tracy over the last five to seven years had touched base with off and on. But because she heard about us from this community partner of ours, she reached out and we went in yesterday and it literally was a perfect match. A a perfect marriage. Nice. Totally aligned. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And isn't it beautiful when you've built and created those type of partnerships where, you know, for the person that referred, it was an absolute no brainer. Right. It's just, it's such a beautiful, and again, that's the space of understanding values, understanding vision, understanding that we're all here to help and support each other. And after we were done, when Tracy and I were leaving, I said to her, I said, you know, we, need, we just need one of those a month. And, and I started, and then um, 
we've got a story that's going in the July magazine and it was perfect for me to ask the contributing writer, is it possible that I can get the contact information for the organization you're referencing or could you do an email introduction? Again, it was somebody that Tracy, my sales associate, had been working on over the last three years, four wow. years. Wow. And, and now it's like this perfect opportunity. So we're just both, you know, the email has gone out. We've, put, we've done our pitch. And I worked really closely with her because she had been doing this. And, you know, so I didn't want to step on her toes on either one of these scenarios, but together we're getting the job done. And I think that feels really good to her. And it's also um, a testament to that relationship building and how important that is to strategy and business. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to be moving into the accountability and consistency and how when all of these things are aligned, it, it means payback. Thank you, Kathy. So I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to make up some time here. So the, uh, there are, I was going to ask all of you, what questions are your managers asking to create accountability and trust? And, um, but in the interest of making up some time, there's, Three that I love to use, and I encourage um, you know, when I'm working with people, you know, Kathy and I actually encourage when we're working with people to ask these three questions. And it's, uh, what should I start doing? What should I stop doing? And what should I continue doing? And there, you can use this with your employees, your team. You can use this with your clients. The reason that these are, are impactful is that it creates a mechanism for trust and that you are, it, you're provided you do something with the information, provided that you, you course correct and you modify, they start to trust that you are there, you were listening, you're gonna show up in a way that, that you'll make change. And, and you're, you're in, in, in some cases, in a lot of cases, they'll start asking this back of you. Uh, so that is, that's just one simple way to create accountability. I, you know, this is, this, yeah, go ahead, Tracy. Questions, what should I start doing, stop doing, and continue? Correct, okay. exactly. Yep, that's correct, exactly. Thank you for, the, for clarifying that, Tracy. So Steve Jobs talks, I think money is a wonderful thing because it enables you to do things. It enables you to invest in ideas that don't have a short-term payback. So, you know, what I love about this particular quote is, you know, we can, we can have organizations that focus on the short-term or, you know, we could have, and, and we can focus on the short-term, a 90-day snapshot, but we need to have the long game in mind. We need to see that, that we are uh, looking at our, our people. We, we're looking at serving our clients. We're looking at pulling uh, uh, together the work that's important to us and our organization and showing up as, as servant leaders uh, in order to have an organization that is knocking it out of the park. Kathy, is there anything you want to add to that? I think that was great. All Nothing. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there is um, strategy and alignment when it comes to payback. So, of course, numbers are important. We've been talking about that during the whole duration of this webinar, right? So what are your metrics? So when you're creating a new strategy, there may be several moving pieces to that strategy, but what are the most important aspects? What do you want to start and drive home within a period of time? So it does come down to, like recently, many businesses have been pivoting. So in that pivot, what is it that is most important for them at this point in time to start driving home? Number one, know your strategy and, and pick the most important items to start to accomplish. Then really look at and analyze the resources. What 
how much time is this really going to take? What needs most attention in order to be able to get this done? Who are the top performers that you can sit down with and say, hey, here we are, here's our strategy. This is the part that we feel is the most important and we want you to help us get there. So let's build this out together. And then after that, it's really communicating and coaching. It's ensuring that you have that 90 day plan in place where you're meeting with your people consistently on a biweekly or weekly basis. How are we? Where are we out? Let's check in. Do you have the tools you need? Is there a place where you feel like I could support you more? And it really is knowing and allowing people to understand that if a mistake is made, a mistake is made. At least you're taking action. At least you're taking a risk. At least you're making decisions. Because as leaders, we all make mistakes and it's important to stand up and admit that. And it's also important to let our team know that, my goodness, if something goes sideways, they're not going to lose their jobs. And if there's issues, solve them immediately. I find it so interesting when Michelle and I talk to our clients and they say, oh, you know, I knew when we hired this person, it wasn't going to work. And then you ask the question, well, how long have they been there? And they say three and a half years. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> so really solve any of those issues immediately. And the, uh, the, yeah, well, the comment that I would make on the engagement piece is there's three ways to measure that, right? So or there, it, look, at it, look at it as a pyramid. And the bottom layer is, do they understand what they're supposed to do? Yeah. Uh, then the second leg up in that pyramid is, do they have a desire to do what you're asking them to do? And then the third layer and the top of the pyramid is, do they have the skill? And, and in order to have a fully engaged employee, you need all three. You need yeses in all three of those camps. So we're... As far as creating consistency, we, we talked about those three questions. You know, what should I do? What should I start doing? What should I stop doing? What should I continue doing? That lays the foundation for understanding what's happening. We, we need to dive into, there, we, Kathy and I did a, a webinar not that long ago. No, actually it was face-to-face. -face. It was when we could actually see people face-to-face. -face. <laughs> <laughs> when we were face-to-face, -face, we had one lady say, uh, I, I, are my, my managers are afraid to ask the questions. Ooh, yeah. that's money. That's a problem. That's a problem. We should, we, we should be asking these questions to figure out where our challenges are. We, and, and if we're not asking these questions, we are not going to be able to fix it. And then we might have people disappear or we might, there might be things that are broken that, that unless you provide the the soil for them to share they're not going to share so you know this is this is an interesting slide and i'm going to cover this fairly quickly but this this is done by wills towers watson there's a ton of research involved in this uh there, there were 500 companies surveyed <clears throat> uh almost 10 million employees so there's a lot of data here for those data geeks on this call that's why we're sharing this information now there's there are um the boxes where you'll see uh is there's essentially companies that are in the essential camp there are companies that are in the uh, emphasis camp and then there are companies that are in the excellence camp and so the essential camp is the one that are, they have the basics, they have salary, they have benefits, uh, that, that's great. Those are just the, covering the basics. And then you have the, the second camp, which is emphasis, and that is, they have the basics, but then they're also providing training to their people. Uh, and then finally, the, the, the orange bar, where we, where we aspire to go, would be and the excellence camp. And that's where you have the basics. You also have the training, but then you're layering on top of that, you're layering in the purpose. You're weaving in the purpose of your organization with the purpose of the employee. And, and like what Tracy mentioned earlier, as far as they're showing up because they believe in the work that Tracy's doing. That's huge. 
right? And then there's growth opportunities for those individuals and they have a voice, their ideas are heard. So the, the organizations that are doing this are in the excellence camp and the numbers prove that this is the right way to go provided that you want to get to a payback um, situation or scenario. Kathy, do you have anything you wanna add there? No, that was awesome, great. Okay. So at the end of this webinar, what we really wanted to do is we wanted to make you an offer. Um, we've talked a lot today about the five different components. So the first component is all about the people, right? How to have the values, how to hire and engage the right people, um, how to build out that vision so everyone's really clear about that. Um, Look at what's making you money. What are the right things that you're doing? What do you need to let go of? How, number three is how to align your top talent with strategy, how to really pair those two things together. Um, creating lasting impact so that uh, you can get the results you expect within that whole accountability piece. And then the last part of the assessment was all about how to create collaboration to fix the critical issues. So those are the five components of the assessment and part of what we discussed today. So this starter package, what Michelle and I would do is we would really analyze your assessment, take a deep look at it and see what areas your organization needs to jump into the most to really do a deep dive and make a difference. Then from there, we would do a customized 90 minute workshop that would allow you to really gain impact on how to plan, how to lead, and how to manage your team to do the breakthroughs of aligning top talent with strategy. And then we would also, and we would do that in a 90 minute Zoom, so we'd all be together. You would choose who you would like to have on this training call, and it would be very collaborative with open communication. And then after that, we would create a 90 day assessment because that's where the rubber hits the road and really allowing you to um, know that you are taking the right actions for measurable results at the end. So we'd like to offer that to you. And if you're interested, you can reach out to us and let us know. Um, our website is actually talentwoes.com. And of course, you're going to have all of our information on the assessment that you did take earlier as well. Exactly. Thank you, Kathy. And I really appreciate all of you showing up today, sharing the information wow. that you did. And we, we, have some, we can stay on if you have some questions that you would like to ask. But I, you know, any, any questions and any thoughts? Any final thoughts? Did you record this? Yes, we did. Yes, yeah. we did. And I'll and I will share it, Tracy. Okay. Yep. Are are the slide decks um available, Michelle? Uh, of course. Yeah, that yeah. Also? I can I can send that along as well. Okay. This is really awesome. Um, a lot to think about as a starter person. <laughs> Great. So, uh, you know, building from scratch with the right foundation is definitely. Oh. Uh, the way to go so yeah i'm 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 thrilled to hear you say that sharon because you know how many times do we we just rush and rush and rush and put stuff together but if you could be thoughtful about the mechanics of what you're building uh instead of fixing it mm. later bonus yeah <laughs> that's it kind of what i'm doing I'm yeah like, i built it, the it, right foundation yeah so i don't fall in that pitfall so many times um, but oh. it's, it, so i'm encouraged so I'm, I'm building my pieces slowly but surely. That's fantastic. That's great, Sharon. That's great. And Tracy, Sharon, everybody, thank you Everyone, so much. Thank for, you for so much. Playing with us today and participating. <laughs> and um, I, for those of you that are Zoom fatigued, we're happy that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, ladies. Have a great thank week and the rest of the week. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye now. Hey.